Uh, down the coastal, uh, the coastline of Texas, known as the Coastal Bin in Corpus Christi, those voluntary evacuations became mandatory, especially for high-profile vehicles because of the bridges. We want to bring in Britta Murren right now in Surfside Beach. Um, Britta, as this storm was strengthening, know you were feeling the effects. Uh, Surfside Beach and these barrier counties that we have, these barrier islands that that received that first hit of the winds, there were efforts to get people off those barrier islands because these winds were going to be so significant as Hurricane Barrel moved in. Yes, and for the surge, too, uh, evacuation orders, those started yesterday. And in fact, yesterday when we were reporting live at Jetty Beach Park, uh, local residents were saying that they actually started the day before that. So there was plenty of time for folks to get out. We showed up on the Barrier Island last night at 1130. So we've been in the elements for now, you know, we're going on our ninth hour. And let me tell you, Barrel's not letting up. Uh, my hand isn't shaky. It's the car. Uh, I'm just keeping an eye on a police officer coming up on our left here. He's patrolling, making sure that the media members that are here riding out the storm are okay. I'm going to flip the camera, Stephen, to show you where we're at. So when we showed up at 1130 last night, we actually were set up at the fire department. The surf uh, side beach fire department offered us safe haven and said, hey, you guys can be here. And then around three o'clock in the morning, that's when the storm surge came up. And at first, it's just a couple inches. But Stephen, as you well know, surge sets in really, really quick. And so once we got to about four, six inches, the firefighters that were with us, they said, hey, we're going to move the trucks. We'd like to offer you an escort. That's a nice way of saying we're going. Uh, so, so we all got on a conga line and got out of here. And we stopped on the bridge. They actually continued to pull the trucks on the other side and put them up towards Freeport to protect the property. But, you know, that's why mandatory evacuations are called. Uh, they, they don't want people to be stuck here without help, of course. And when you don't heed those warnings, you are assuming that threat. Uh, right in front of us, Stephen, that's the Gulf of Mexico. I'm just going to roll forward, but I do want to pay attention to these traffic lights. Uh, straight ahead, you notice how we have two traffic lights. We used to have three. Uh, and now we're down to two. We actually were rolling video when it snapped off. So if you want to see what that experience is like, it was a little scary. Go to my Facebook page and Instagram. It's at Britta Merwin WX. Again, at Britta Merwin WX. We got video posted of that traffic light smashing down to the ground. But as I roll forward here, Stephen, uh, that's the surge right there. The Gulf of Mexico sits about 100 yards in front of us. Of course, with the rain, you can't really see it. Uh, this is another SUV, you know, media member that's sort of traversing the area as well. Uh, the storm surge has stayed pretty steady on that side. As we turn down here on the street, this is actually the street that takes you down to the fire department. This was completely covered in water. Uh, now it is starting to recede, but look at the debris that is left behind, Stephen. I'm just going to continue to roll through because honestly, I'd like to be away from the power lines and the traffic lights. So I feel a little bit safer driving forward, especially now that we got some daylight. But as we roll forward, look at the prongs that have washed forward, completely covering the street. As I take a look in front of that white SUV, there's actually a blue picnic table that is flipped over and covering the road. We'll continue to roll forward. We'll see what this car does in front of us uh, to see if there's actually a way past that picnic table. But you can tell that we have a lot of the debris that came up from the storm surge. Oh my goodness, Stephen, look at this. Look at this. We have an RV completely flipped over. Uh, you know, they had mandatory evacuations for recreational vehicles that started on Friday. This is why uh, this RV is completely flipped over on its side. That's not going to be salvageable. Uh, I, my heart breaks for the person that owns that, that RV because that's not going to make it out of this storm. It's completely cracked on its side. It is exposed to elements, water definitely getting in. We also have a sign. I'm going to tilt the camera. You can see it right there. That's a metal sign that's ripped off. Uh, it says private property, no parking. Um, yeah, well, this is where we're at. 
As we look over here, we're at the intersection of Starfish. Notice that the sign is still really blowing in the wind. The winds just won't let up, Stephen. It's insane. I mean, gosh, at this point, we've been sheltering in our car for four hours. If you've been watching us since last night around 1130, I was out in the elements for a while. But then once the fire department uh, escorted us off the barrier island and we started sheltering up on the bridge, the winds just got too intense. And I was on an elevated bridge. It's just not safe to broadcast live. And since that point, we've been stuck in the car. Uh, you can tell that the prongs are being pulled off of the palm trees. In fact, we sent some video of one actually giving way to the wind and palms are made to take on wind. So when you see the tops of them snap off, it, it definitely shows the power of the wind itself. But the fire department is that red structure that's right up there. Uh, the barn, you're looking at the side of it. The three bays are still open. I'll see if I can roll forward just a little bit, see what other view we can give you guys. But there is quite a large amount of debris. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to pull it. It's 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 not really safe to get through this road, to be quite honest. There's a lot on the road. Uh, but Stephen, it's it's been a wild experience to say the least. I think the wind for anybody that did ride it out on the island uh, is really going to be something that they take away from this. It's been a while since they felt wind from a hurricane. Uh, Nicholas made landfall in 2021. That happened about 10 miles west of Sargent, which isn't too far off from where we had landfall of Barrel. That was a 90 mile per hour hurricane in 2021 with Nicholas and Surfside Beach had a four to five foot storm surge. So it's gonna be interesting to hook up with Mark Suddeth. We have a camera that he installed to take a look at the surge and really dive into the data of, of what unfolded here last night. But I can tell you from being someone that rode it out on this barrier island, it was an experience and it still is an experience. I mean, impressive how long these winds are holding on. Um, we have a, Britta, we have a high tide cycle coming at Surfside, as, as you know, shortly before 8 o'clock, and then we'll be dropping throughout the day. So maybe some good news there that the, that the tide can re uh, recede just a bit. But the winds, not too far in Freeport, that's where we had the strongest wind, a 91 mile per hour wind gust reported there. And Surfside on that barrier island, certainly some significant damage that we're seeing now firsthand. Uh, no surprise, too, that power is out.